What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Man, it feels good to say those words. Whew, it's been a minute. It's been a minute, but I'm here to talk about All-Star Day. Not weekend, unless you want to count the two-on-two -two between Quavo and, and 2 Chains. It was just an All-Star Day. And I don't know if I really, really enjoyed it or it was kind of bad and forgettable. It's, it's one of the two. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let's, let's have that conversation. I can say... I did like the structure of this day, starting off with the skills competition, going all the way down to the last buzzer of the All-Star game. I really like the idea of it being one day full of everything. But me and you know that that's not going to be the case next year. You know, hopefully things are a little bit more safe because the NBA loves that revenue. Three days of ad revenue, three days of of ticket sales, you know they, they breaking it back up. But I do like that everything was right after each other. Until we got to the second half today, I thought this was a whole W. Skills competition is what it is. It's like a appetizer, a little warm. Nobody actually cares about the skills competition. The people in the skills competition don't care about the skills competition. So with that being said, it was still enjoyable, I think. I was rooting for Robert Covington because it was just different to see a guy like him in that because he he has not showcased like skill like dribbling ability passing ability throughout his entire career but I understand why he was there for the HBCU shout out to them but I, I was rooting for him for that moment alone for that reason alone but obviously that <laughs> that didn't go well my boy CP missed the whole layup but he made up for it because he dunked the ball for the, I think the second all-star game in the row so then we get to the three-point competition and man did this feel amazing Steph Curry being back in the event made everything just work out well we knew there was this guy this Goliath of a shooter in this competition and I of course I love watching Steph Curry shoot the ball as the purest looking jump shot because after he missed those first two in his first um first time around he was absolutely automatic he just had to recalibrate, and he just found it. It's like it's so incredible to see people that are the best at what they do, whether this is sports, whether this is music, whatever it may be. When you are the absolute best at something, bar none, there is no better shooter than Stephen Curry on this planet right now. So to see him find that moment and lock in is incredible, and I think everybody was in awe of it. One thing I didn't like is, of course, that Damian Lillard had to pull out for the rest reasons because I think that those two players are the ones that we get in that final. Shout out to Mike Conley because he he definitely uh, uh, showed a lot of people wrong, but I wanted to see Dame versus Steph, and then once we got to the actual game and these dudes was literally pulling up from half court, made me want to see them go back and forth from three in the actual three-point shootout even more. So Steph Curry kills it in, in the three-point shootout, coming down to the last possible shot. And then we get to the first half of, of the All-Star game, and it was beautiful. I, I think that the NBA, and I think we're going to be comparing last year's All-Star game in Chicago with the New Elam ending, and it ended with Anthony Davis hitting that shot, basically being a close, everybody's buckling in. We're going to compare that game to every single game in the near future because that was the most competitive game that we've seen in a very long time and I think that the players are try to find this balance of being competitive and also trying to show out for the fans right because you need a, a balance of both and I think last year was a perfect perfect example of that but the first half man it was crazy to see Steph Curry do everything he does it was crazy to see Giannis dominate these are the type of games though that the big man the dominant force that's why Shaq has three finals MVPs that's why Anthony Davis has a few because at the end of the day nobody's really guarding like a guy like Giannis when he's in the paint so he could just run to the basket and dunk the ball but he showed a lot of different stuff like a step back three in the corner girlfriend was like that's not him right and I was like nah <laughs> he's not doing that type of stuff in the regular season game that's not him and then he had a bank three-pointer he was bringing out all the tricks and I think I saw a stat on Twitter that he is the only player in NBA history to go to an all-star game and shoot perfect from the field with over 10 shot attempts so that is an inc incredible stat line in itself I didn't even realize that Dame had 32 overall the first half of the game was well played from both sides you know of course the team LeBron was stacked by the end of you know what I'm saying when well, you got Joel Embiid you have Devin Booker and, and and of course the captain himself Kevin Durant not being there of course we knew that team LeBron was going to win we was trying to see how dominant of a performance what is going to be and through the first half of course team LeBron was winning but it wasn't like a dominant until like we got to the second half and that's when it kind of got boring um team Durant kind of stayed in in this for the first half but yeah it's very weird to have team Durant missing that many people I was I was saying this in our podcast imagine they go through this draft right team LeBron versus team Kevin Durant you draft Devin Booker 
and then your Devin Booker draftee gets replaced by Mike Colley. Now, that's not a knock at Mike Colley, but if you were trying to get Devin Booker and you got Mike Colley as a substitute, that's, that is a downgrade. And then we have this whole thing that was the, the biggest – the biggest concern when it comes to putting together this all-star game was like the COVID thing. And we saw that today with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons, who of course bona fide all-stars should have been in the game today but due to contra um, uh, contact tracing, they could not perform. And like Joel Embiid is an MVP candidate this year and he couldn't actually be in the all-star game. And I know he's in Atlanta. He's mad. Like he even tweeted, he even tweeted Mickey Mouse all-star game, which is enabling all of those guys that use that Mickey Mouse meme stuff to continue to do what they do. Joel, we gotta be, we gotta be better. Do not open that gate because it will not close. Um, but then we get to the dunk contest, and well, the dunk contest was extremely underwhelming. And you know what? I did not look at the three players that were into it and immediately thought that it was going to be a dud. Um, when you compare it to some of the previous years, we know like bona fide dunkers were in it bona fide like really really good players were in it and I didn't look at these three guys and immediately say you this is gonna suck I, I gave this a legitimate chance and it just didn't live up to any expectation for me not that the dunks were bad or anything like they were good dunks and they were impressive dunks there's no flair to it and maybe that's because there was not a lot of crowd or maybe the dunks just weren't didn't have enough flair to the crowd to get into it you know because there were still 2,500 people there I think they said Something like that. And then the players that were even on the sideline didn't react to these dunks. Steph Curry and them were reacting crazy to the actual game the whole time. We got to the dunk contest, and they were like, nice dunk. A little clap. You know, nobody was really reacting. Anthony Simons put on some cool dunks. The dunk that Cassius Stanley started with was dope, but it was also something we've seen before, so it didn't get a high grade. And the Obi Toppin brought up something Zach Levine did a week ago, and then, like, it was just some of the dunks were pretty basic, but impressive. Don't get me wrong. Impressive, but basic. Nothing was, like, something we've never seen before. If Anthony Simon would have actually gave that the lips to the rim, that would have been different. Him jumping up 12 feet was kind of different, but it didn't have that little flair to it to make, like, as a as a – person as a basketball fan jumping up 12 feet to get a ball and dunking it is impressive but I feel like to the casual fan that was just a dunk maybe I'm wrong here overall not really impressive and then that same energy kind of carried on to the second half where we it just was happening it was just happening the only I think the only downside of having everything in like one day slate is that it felt like it was going on forever like, at the end of the third quarter, they had the legend Anthony Hamilton come through and sing a song, which is dope, for, for the frontline workers, which is dope. But it definitely felt like <laughs> we were going on for six hours already. You know what I'm saying? So um, maybe the pacing or maybe starting a little bit earlier, if we're going to keep it one day, would have been better. I still don't know if I really loved it or it was – like, when we look back three years from now, are we going to remember this game? Maybe we remember Steph Curry being dominant in the three-point shootout. Maybe we remember that, that Giannis didn't miss a shot. But I think we're going to keep comparing it to 2020 in Chicago. I, I, just do, I just think we do. I think we do. 2020 in Chicago, I do love the idea of them naming the MVP award after Kobe. That is, be that is a beautiful gesture because, um, of course, Kobe also destroyed all-star games. 2011 is the one that comes to mind because they, they just retro the Pro Tro 6 um, where he, he won all-star game MVP in, in L.A., at that, and I wore them in the three point or the the shootout I was in uh, a couple days ago that we will not talk about because I lost. Overall, I don't regret watching obviously because it's basketball. What I am going to to be really upset about or kind of lost with is there's no basketball for the next what two three days? I think until Wednesday night. So it's going to be rough. Let me know what you think about All Star Man. Was it a W? Was it an L? Let me know. Comment section. Peace out. Call game.